um, Bridget, Maureen, put your hand up if it's if it's clear. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, that's good. All right, and um, the way I've put it out is it's both bad and good news. The bad news is it's the end of the world as we know it. Uh, and the good news is also the, it's the end of the world as we know it. We can choose, we can decide whether it's good or bad news. Um, and so that's a consciousness issue, right? If you think it's bad, um, well, maybe there needs to be some changes. Uh, I'm saying it could be good news because we need to change as a, as a mankind or a womankind, whatever. And um, I'll try and describe why I, I say that we need to change. It might come up, otherwise I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it as I go along. All right. It's our most comprehensive message on the need for rural cooperatives producing food as offerings of love rather than up for profit. When you produce food for profit, you take shortcuts and you start put, putting chemicals in the food um, and you try and get it out there as cheaply as you can. You're also trying to make the soil overproduce. And uh, what many people are not aware of is there is a, a severe um, topsoil crisis happening on the planet. Uh, and I played movies on this at our cinema. Um, and I can go right back several decades with information warning us of this uh, impending crisis. You don't hear about it, do you? Right? You hear about something fictitious, like carbon being a, a pollutant, rubbish like that, or, or um, politics, uh, which have got no relevance in living our lives um, so yeah rather than doing it for profit it becomes an expression of joy and not fear yeah. the artificially induced depression is based on fake science and the media frenzy could result in unimaginable food shortages let's keep going here we can be angry at the current state of affairs or we can do something positive about it. And here we are. Uh, we'll probably have another one on, on Monday and there might be other special guests that we'll put on, uh, but generally Fridays and Mondays, Mondays. We can also choose to be angry. And I saw this quote just the other day and I thought it's absolutely perfect. Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a cage. The rage is not doing anything for us uh, in terms of a solution. We can get really angry. Um, I'm not saying go out and do, do the protest, which is coming up on uh, Sunday. Um, but have an attitude of, of love when you do it. <laughs> Perhaps that will help. I'm not sure how at this stage. Uh, but don't go there as um, battling um, authorities and uh, trying to make them submit to our, you know, our call for freedom. Okay. Now, we ordered a copy of uh, Vaxxed 2. Um, oh, somebody's drawing on the screen. Uh, several, or a couple of months ago, we also played Vaxxed 1. Um, uh, more than a year ago, and we can look at screening Vax2 very soon. And uh, what I can say about that is, is what a sick, sick world, a corporate, corporatized system beyond repair. And the question I'm asking is why bother fixing it? Uh, we've rescued the bankers after a, the last financial crash. Um, are we going to do that all over again? Uh, why bother? Uh, why not take the step? Uh, it's it's going to be a courageous step to look at becoming um, 
independent of the system, right? I'm not saying we become independent. If you're trying to do it alone, right, and you go to the country and you try and implement self-sufficiency, uh, another word for that is insufficiency. Uh, if you're trying to do it alone, it's really tough. Uh, the, the models for humanity, which I've studied for, for decades, uh, and I've presented lots of information on this in the past, is humans are supposed to live in like tribal collectives where, where everyone is contributing to the benefit and the welfare of everyone else. That's not the suburban model. Right, the suburban model is a divide and conquer regime. Right, they set we are separated into our own um, uh, suburban block or flat, even right where there's no land, and we're disconnected from the earth. Uh, that's not where we're supposed to be as humans. Um, in fact, the nuclear family is a disaster according to um, a lot of information I work with. We're supposed to be in collectives, right, where we have the children, we have the mothers and fathers, we have the uncles, the aunties, the grandparents, the great grandparents, and of course our friends, which might be part of the community as well. Um, that model uh, appeals to the children because they've got lots of role models, right? And if a child in a family, in a nuclear family, does not receive the attention of uh, some of their siblings, then it sets up um, a, a dilemma for that child. And uh, they will feel the effects of that dilemma all their lives, right? They don't understand why they're lesser than the other. And that leads to um, an attack on whoever they can attack, um, even themselves. Okay, another admission um, in order to handle the, the situation. All right, I'm saying also the attacks on humanity will never cease if we do not change direction. And the quote, which I've pointed out many, many times, is old energy does not surrender ever. It simply dies. Okay, who's making all that noise? <laughs> Turn off your, your microphones for now. We'll have a Q&A later. Okay, so a lot of you are familiar with um, the story of McDonald's in Tacoma uh, several years ago. And despite all the opposition um, to trying to stop McDonald's setting up Tacoma, uh, the, the, people's, the people's will was um, overridden. Um, and even with 100,000 uh, petitions, uh, it had zero effect. Uh, that's another topic. No, I'm not going to discuss that too much to, today. Um, a quote from a, a documentary we, a documentary series that we played at Mag, Mag by AD Kingdom and Empire is that monsters are real and they cannot be slayed try and they grow another head that bites back twice as hard. That's the problem with being a pure activist, uh, according to this documentary. Um, based on information I've worked with, uh, we could have a, a way to deal with that situation. The first of those is learn the rules so you know how to break them properly. Right. We've been involved with some brilliant minds. Uh, we've got presentations, which is on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can access that through uh, the Magpie House website. We were given talks um, on the rules um, and how to know them inside out. 
so that you can use them effectively. Uh, I'm urging people to uh, subscribe to that YouTube channel because the presentations, um, I, can, I can say, are world class. Right. And the second quote, which is less implemented, I think, is you never change the things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And that comes from um, uh, Buck Buckminster Fuller, uh, more than a century ago, uh, or could be. And that tells us that, of course, acknowledge the problem, acknowledge the evil, so we can talk about it um, and protect ourselves by learning the rules. However, put your energy into something alternative. Uh, and that's what I'm proposing. That's what we're proposing for these rural cooperatives. Uh, because if we're gonna have to produce food, we better start moving with that. Um, my next statement, these imply that fighting and fixing a broken system is an absolute waste of energy. Uh, the quote backing that up is what you resist persists. What you fear most, you attract. And that comes from the conversation material, if some, if some of you might be familiar with that. Um, and the next statement provides the reason why that is so. It's because the universe is actually a mental construction. It's not physical, right? All physicality is a vibration and it's affected through our thoughts. Our thoughts are creating the reality and a lot of people are not even aware of that. This is part of the awakening. These attacks that are occurring are not a coincidence. They are happening um, as, a, as, as a consequence of natural law, the law of attraction. And the rest of that is what we oppose becomes our reality. And that is the law of attraction. I'm going to move on to acknowledge the problem, but always focus on the solution. Right? I hear a lot of protesting going on, but what are you? What are, what are people offering as a solution? Right? If you don't have a solution in mind and you don't have a vision of that and work towards it, it's not going to happen. Uh, and what I'm saying here is, we are creators, but activists recreate their power in an unexpected way, and they end up with more activism. Uh, I'm not saying we don't need to be active, uh, so activism is part of it, but don't be a pure activist. Right? You, you need to have something in mind, a vision, an intention that you can work towards. Uh, this is natural law that trumps all man-made law, and it's nothing more than basic metaphysics. Um, I could even go to the point of saying, be grateful for the attacks on humanity as they are a catalyst for change. We are living in ind an indulgent big city lifestyle where we are consumers instead of producers. And if you go down the path of westernized economics, then we have to be controlled at all costs or even exterminated altogether. Um, what we, we get what we deserve when we live the indulgent big city lifestyle which is dependent on corporate farming that rapidly depletes topsoil. Uh, it's, it's not a friendly way of, of growing food. Um, and the quote, which also comes from the conversations material in the mid-1990s, is there is rapidly developing soil shortage on your planet. That is, you are running out of good soil in which to grow your food. To make up for the loss of time, chemicals are being dumped into the land in order to render it render it fertile faster. And we can see the insanity of that. The chemicals that we're dumping are actually destroying the soil. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm saying it, it's one of the biggest problems which we're, we're really going to be facing. The next quote also comes from conversation material, but this one's from um, very recent, uh, 2017. It's saying, uh, and I've presented this before in 5G forums, 
if we do not awaken now, during this early stage of our cosmic development, we could wind up living in this lifeline, essentially as many older species in the physical realm do, becoming more and more violent, even as we become more and more advanced. The reply to those, that, the uh, text, is those last 13 words are a description of how things go are going on your planet now. I'm saying what that is referring to is a technocratic, technocratic society. Uh, we're being mesmerized with technology. It's even becoming a religion, and that's dangerous. Uh, the artificial intelligence that everybody's raving about, well, a lot of people anyway, uh, does not have compassion. It's machine intelligence. intelligence. Uh, it, and we would create a nightmarish future timeline and we don't need to choose it. I'm not saying um, reject technology. Right? It's supposed to be a balance between cosmology and technology. Um, if we go purely down the technology path, then that technology will use the controllers. And we're all, already seeing big evidence of that. You know, facial recognition and um, mandating uh, vaccinations, which may be unnecessary. Uh, and you'll be tracked on that. Uh, one of the disturbing elements is... Um, uh, is it more than 4 million um, downloads of the government app on tracking app has been, has been done? Uh, that, con that concerns me. Uh, people are almost saying, I want to be tracked. And I, I don't understand that anyway. And so I'm coming to a, a little conclusion here. Hence, set up rural cooperatives. Nurture the earth, soil, and water. Don't fight the old, create the new. That's the blueprint of mankind. See further below, this cannot be ignored. And I've also said, there's no need to hurry nor panic. We have no time, but we are surrounded by eternity. And that's a paradox for our reason. In other words, don't try and work it out logically. Uh, I'm saying go within and find guidance from within. Uh, do some meditation on a regular basis and just go into peace and, and see what you can come up with. Um, one of the, um, the items I, I quite like is the, the mind is a house of questions. However, the heart is a library of answers. Right? So you can ask the question through the mind and then connect into the heart and you'll find a wealth of information uh, by looking within. Yeah, the other quote from that is, go within so that you do not go without. Uh, it's time to wake up now. Um, so moving further down into the email. Uh, some related announcements. So, yeah, we're suggesting join the Solutions Empowerment blog uh, through that link, uh, through the uh, the Mark uh, Patelic um, initiative. Uh, there's some very powerful webinars there on a variety of subjects. There is the, the protest um, a part. Hang on a sec. All right, we've got somebody else joining. There is the protest at Parliament House this Sunday, midday. Make a stand, people, uh, on the steps of every parliament house. We don't consent to self-isolating, social distancing, tracking apps, 5G being installed in mass while we are in lockdown, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah, try and do it peaceful, peacefully, and so that you can use your your energy into something positive. And don't stay on the negative. But it needs to be acknowledged. Because we don't want to bury our heads in the sand. That doesn't work. Uh, in fact, a see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil um, uh, idea doesn't work either. You have to know what it is that you have to change. 
Okay. Uh, tomorrow evening, no, not tomorrow evening, tomorrow midday, there is a, uh, a special uh, presentation. It's a Zoom presentation called Mastering the Energy and Psychology of Money. Uh, and I'm saying it's an important tool to navigate the transition and transformation we wish to see. That'll be at the, um, that is at the uh, the front of the Magpie House website if you'd like to um, take a good look at that and see if it's appropriate for you. Uh, it's not an ordinary presentation about making money and all this sort of thing. It is um, related to what uh, we've been uh, covering so far tonight. Uh, below this, I've got a number of links uh, which are, are, are almost brand new and are related to this. Um, have I talked about the second wave? The second wave of lockdowns. When they turn on the 5G, that, from what we can tell, will produce flu-like symptoms. And guess what will get the blame? Uh, you know, blame it on the virus. And so that's the excuse for the lockdown. And uh, the, the 2020 depression presentation goes into a lot of detail of um, the depression that could be created from this second wave of lockdown. It even recommends uh, growing food as this artificially induced depression hits hard. Yeah, he's, he's even show, he even shows us his greenhouse way out in the country. <laughs> Must be a reason for that. Uh, a lot of you have seen the David Icke on, on London, real, and <clears throat> uh, we played a lot of um, the David Icke material before, and in particular the the David Icke life story earlier this year. And David Icke was inspired in 1990. He was guided to a book on a shelf called Mind to Mind. You know, he goes into that, how he was guided to that book in, in a lot of detail in his documentary uh, about himself. Um, I could say that the awakening I was guided to was a, a book called Mind Over Matter in 1984. And if I compare the two, the, the Mind to Mind information is um, a well, um, well presented and uh, in-depth uh, psychic medium type uh, in information um, package. The mind over matter information uh, was actually written by a couple in South Australia and it goes deep into metaphysics. It goes back many tens of millions of years on, on previous humanities. I don't think that we are the only, the only humanity that's ever existed on this planet. Uh, it goes through the catastrophes they, they went through. It also talks about our soul families, right? And the information, uh, we do have soul families. We've got biological families, but we also have soul families. And it also presents in a lot of detail why we choose to be born in this material realm. This sort of information corresponds precisely to um, uh, a practitioner that we had uh, at Magpie House for nine years. And he was a, um, a well-trained um, clinical hypnotherapist. And the information which he shared with us from his clients responds almost precisely to this mind over matter information. Mind over matter in the early 1980s uh, told us that, um, it, well, it was actually very damning of humanity because we, we'd created so much suffering over the last century. Um, and it was almost definitely that we were gonna annihilate each other. Uh, however, <laughs> we've come through, we've transcended that, right? We're in a different era now and we have the opportunity to bring in a golden age, right? So that's the, the incentive behind the rural, rural cooperatives. Uh, we don't want to just put it out there once. We, we would like to multiply this model hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of times around the world. 
uh, and we do have detailed documentation on that process. Uh, we might be sharing that in tomorrow's webinar, uh, the psychology. George, of could you mute everybody, please? I beg your pardon. Okay, Sorry, could you mute? Could you of that. Uh, goes to uh, the Before It's News website uh, and describes uh, that very item. Okay, so let's go further down. The YouTube channel's got a lot of information. Lawful Spirit. Another admission. Friday, Monday evenings. Uh, one of the latest videos we've got on our YouTube channel is called Code of Conduct for Peace and Community. I would recommend people get on there and watch that video. Uh, it, it shows us information from a couple of really powerful sources. Uh, the first of those is The Invisible Rainbow, and it's a book on electricity. It clearly shows that, uh, or puts a very compelling case that says that uh, uh, influenza is actually, is actually an electrical uh, radiation disease. And it shows periods in our history when electricity was turned on, the levels of influenza increased dramatically. And the biggest um, spike occurred in 1918. Now, there, there could be conflicting information there because I've also seen information saying the 1918 Sp Spanish flu was actually, uh, wasn't even a virus. It was bacterial and it was a, uh, a vaccination experiment that went wrong. You know, it killed an estimated 50 to 100 million people. Um, also in that code of conduct, uh, video on our YouTube channel. It presents, uh, oh, there's a, there's a brand new, uh, almost brand new paper released from the IEEE, that's the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers uh, worldwide, uh, which I was a member of uh, under its Australian affiliate on the IREE um, for many decades. And they've broken their silence. This, this article, this paper was released January, but then it was updated in March of this year. And it produces the information in direct conflict with bodies like our Apunza. You know, it's telling us that biological, uh, it, sorry, wireless radiation is a biological hazard. Right, and because of the prestigeness of that organisation, uh, it it's it could be a very powerful tool to show, uh, to use, to implement in whatever we're doing if we're uh, tackling that e that particular wireless issue. All right, let's go further down. Uh, oh yes, it also. Oh yeah, that's right. There's, there's two other very powerful positive papers which show the alternatives to 5G. 5G is not supposed to, or wireless in itself, is not supposed to compete with fiber and wired services. And the reason for that is 5G is a shared resource. Whereas if you've got fiber to your premises, your home or your business, it's not shared. It's, it's uh, you don't get congestion. Uh, you don't subject to beam forming and things like that. Uh, but that's in that other presentation. Oh, there's a bit of yoga on the screen. Uh, we're doing uh, Zoom yoga online if people are interested. And I'll just tell you our motto is the, the finest in Hatha yoga. So let's keep going now. Um, I'm assuming you can see that little post I saw that we saw this on Facebook a couple of weeks ago and uh, it was um, talking about the end of the uh, of the pandemic lockdown and what it's saying is nothing should go back to normal 
normal wasn't working. If we go back to the way things were, we will have lost the lesson. May we rise up and do better. Yeah, so we, we support that. Uh, and I was um, very pleased to see that. Um, in, the, in the small text just above that, we're saying that um, humanity is living an indulgent lifestyle. What I mean by that is we're crowding ourselves into big cities, particularly in Australia. We're probably the most um, uh, tightly packed uh, population centres in the world. You know, the vast majority of the country is empty. And so we will be a target for the smart city agenda. Uh, and if you don't get your, um, uh, if you don't go along with the directives, even if not, they're not law, they might say, well, you don't get access to your, uh, to travel. You don't get access to your bank account. You may not get access to food um, and you'll be tracked. That's the other reason for the, uh, the rural cooperatives multiplied um, thousands of times. Uh, uh, we just we don't want to do it alone okay um and so it's, it is an indulgent lifestyle because it depends on corporate farming uh, if you've got a city of 12 million and there are cities like that around the world the food has to be trucked in and it uh, the new the um from one of the documentaries we played years ago 10 years ago uh called end of suburbia it's saying that the, the city of New York only has two to three days food supply. I don't think uh, some of the big cities we've got in Australia would be much different. Um, and so we have to be consumers in that environment uh, rather than what we are supposed to be. We're supposed to be creators. We're supposed to be producers. Um, we've got the intelligence um, the, cognic, the cognitive power to actually improve diversity on this planet, uh, improve life. If we don't use it properly, then we actually destroy life. And that's when these problems kick in. Uh, what I'm saying is it's no coincidence that we are being attacked right at this time. But of course, we've got the opportunity to change that. All right, so here's a, um, a poster on behalf of the um, the old bloody 5G groups. Um, it says limited to under families, that could change. Uh, and there's uh, table lands, uh, lands available with superb climates over a thousand meters elevation. Um, temperatures rarely exceed 33 degrees C. Uh, there is a nominal $30,000 domain um, suggestion, but there's also $0 options. Um, but on the other end of the scale, there can be million dollar options, right? There is some magnificent land uh, available uh, that we have a lot of contacts into. Um, and if you can get us your Obladi 5G proton mail dot com uh, information uh, we can start building uh, from there on that idea uh, let's keep going yeah the text is it the full text is in the email as well I copied it in okay the final section of the um, the email goes into into a deep analysis of why uh, there can be an incentive behind rural cooperatives. Um, with the shutdown, businesses are shut down. With the lockdown, the businesses have shut down. Jobs have been lost or restructured. And there's even talk of food shortages. Uh, I won't go through all of it because uh, we've already covered some of the information. The corporate farming destroys the topsoil and we are defined as consumers rather than producers. 
what we have in the world today is an overbalance of consumers. If we wind the clock back just 100 years, you'll probably find that 90% of the population was involved and knew how to plant food, right? Whereas these days, it's probably 10% or less. Um, so with that overbalance of consumers, it's no surprise that humanity is under attack, and I call that natural law. The answer is rural cooperatives. We create through vision, intention, and action. Whereas a pure activist, <laughs> uh, laboring on this point a little bit, tries to fix what may already be broken and beyond repair. That's the way I see it. Um, post COVID-19, there's a window of opportunity to exit the VAX fluoride wireless microchip tracking facial recognition agenda in order to restructure into decentralized society before the attacks intensify into machine and, and artificial intelligence that bears no compassion. Yeah, yeah, don't be surprised if that's the way it elevates um, over the coming years. Um, there's an excellent documentary we played uh, earlier this year called Need to Grow. Uh, I'll put a link there to the trailer and uh, it confirms the quote that I um, uh, presented early on, that there is a rapidly developing of a soil shortage on your planet. That is, you are running out of good soil in which to grow your food. <clears throat> And that documentary verifies that. And then there's a, just a selection of quotes uh, that might be relevant to this um, issue. Uh, we start with a, a Ramtha quote, and, and I'm not a, um, a Ramtha activist, uh, but some of the information seems to be pertinent. Yeah, it says, if you desire to sustain, find a piece of land and love it, it will love you back. I can extrapolate on that uh, simple statement. Um, and according to uh, the indigenous peoples, the earth is their mother. The earth is a sentient being, uh, way, way more evolved than any uh, two-legged creature. Right. The earth and all planetary bodies are living entities that support life. And uh, the earth itself supports a vast uh, diversity of life and offers itself freely. However, if we were to irritate the earth enough, it's got the capability to just throw us off this planet. Right. Uh, it, 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 it's even in the Old Testament that um, the earth can shrug its shoulder and get rid of us in one shrug. It's like our own bodies. If, it's, if it gets infested with a rash, we take drastic action. The earth is no different, um, according to information that I've worked with. So Ramtha also says, purchase property. And I am not speaking of condos. That's the big city um, ideas. Get out of the cities. They will be the most dangerous places to live. Even in these days now, they are becoming so. They will become unbearable in the days to come. Purchase land close to small townships. Do not live so far into the hills that no one can find you. Purchase land where you can grow things that not only support you, but that you can render and barter in the days to come. You can never lose on land that is purchased. You never will. Now, that quote comes from a, um, a book published, I think, 1986. And so a different paradigm. I think there were earth changes involved with this item. And... 
Um, in those times, that was the timeline we were selecting. We changed that timeline. In 1987, we had worldwide meditations. It was called the Harmonic Convergence. Some of you may even remember it. And um, from information that we've got, it raised the consciousness of humanity just enough so that we didn't have to go through catastrophe, uh, both natural and man-made. Um, I've actually got heaps of information on, on that, which verifies that. Uh, but the Rantha quotes are very useful because they seem to be um, resurfacing in a different way right now. The next quotes come from the conversations material that we spoke of before. And uh, this seems to get under some people's skin. Uh, it's saying that at some level, you have all created that which you detest. And having created it, you have chosen it. All right? So a lot of people object to that idea that we have created what, what we detest. Well, at a deeper level, perhaps we, we have. Uh, we don't even realize what we're creating. Um, and so it goes on. This you cannot accept, so you disown your own creations. It is this intellectual and spiritual dishonesty which lets you accept a world in which conditions are as they are. If you had to accept or even felt a deep inner sense of personal responsibility for the world, it would be a far different place. That this is so patently obvious is what makes it so utterly painful and so poignantly ironic. Um, the following quote is, only when you say, I did this, can you find the power to change it? Uh, personal re responsibility is the key. Uh, we don't even realize how powerful we are. And uh, one of my favorite quotes from Marianne Williamson <clears throat> is that our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure and that's part of the awakening that humanity needs to go through and make the old system redundant um, it goes on and this is information which shares how highly evolved beings live as compared to where we are on, uh, on uh, where the way we're living right now and so it says you believe that grouping together in large cities solves problems when it only creates them. It is true that in large cities there are services, there are jobs, there are entertainments which are not and cannot be found in small towns and villages. But your mistake is in calling these things valuable when in fact they are detrimental. Um, what's an example? Oh, those nightclubs <laughs> where you can get paralytic and have a good brawl out in the street and, and things like that, okay? <laughs> Uh, or they turn up the music so loud, loud that you go deaf uh, in, in the process. But anyway, that's, that's another story. It goes on. You've torn apart your families. You've disassembled your smaller communities in favour of huge cities. In these big cities, there are more people, but fewer tribes, groups or clans whose members see their responsibility as including responsibility for the whole. Yours have become a singular society rather than a plural one. That is a society made up of individuals rather than groups. Let's just talk about individuality uh, for a moment. Uh, the westernized mindset is very, very individual. Um, in a highly evolved society, they don't use democracy because democracy marginalizes the minority. Right? And if you're part of the minority, Let's say you're severely electrosensitive. Who cares about you? You're the minority. Majority rules. Uh, and that doesn't make sense in a highly evolved society. The highly evolved uh, system is to use consensus. That means everybody has to agree. And that's a difficult one for particularly the westernized mindset to deal with. 
you know, to comprehend. How could it possibly work? How can you get millions of people to agree on the same agenda? Well, um, <clears throat> we studied intentional communities and there are westernized intentional communities that have adopted a special model for the westernized mindset and it's called modified consensus. Now, modified consensus uh, deals with habitual objectors. Uh, it's usually the same people that will object over and over again. And if anybody objects, they must form a committee to find out why they're objecting. And they, and they habitual objectors won't want to do that. And it, and it, and it stops them in their tracks. Uh, it's been implemented very successfully. Um, again, I've um, screened a lot of the movies uh, which are related to that subject. Uh, of communities around the world and who have implemented that sort of model. <clears throat> so let's move on to highly evolved beings. It's uh, the information is saying they live in clusters or what your world would call communities, but for the most part, they have abandoned their version of what you call cities or nations. Cities became too big and no longer supported the purpose of clustering, but worked against that purpose. They produced crowded individuals instead of a clustered community. Uh, yeah, the purpose of clustering is so that we can support each other um, in that community. And then we get into ownership. Uh, a highly evolved being experiences personal ownership in the sense of holding personal responsibility for every good thing in his care. The closest word in your language to describe what our Heb feels about what you would call a prized possession is stewardship. A Heb is a steward, not an owner. In fact, um, it's described that highly evolved beings do not have a concept of ownership. And the next paragraph makes that clear. Hebs do not possess, hebs caress. That is, they hold, embrace, love and care for things, but they do not own them. And, it, and then it follows, humans became obsessed with this concept of ownership. Hebs who watch, watch this from a distance call this your possession, obsession uh, that gives us a clue as well that we are being watched right by benevolent species which have gone through this themselves right they've evolved to a point which transcends physicality um, and so to give themselves something to do uh, that could be one of the reasons they go out into the galaxy and they look after fledgling uh, races, just like ours. Uh, that doesn't mean they interfere. They're not allowed to interfere with our collective choices. Um, and so the danger of that is that if we choose to, uh, to if we choose catastrophe, it cannot be stopped, right? Uh, the universe and the spirit won't mind. It's happened many, many times over. Um, and so, uh, but they can inspire us. Right? They now, after the um, the, fire, the bombing, the atomic bomb was dropped in 1945. The um, the Galactic Federations got very, very concerned with our use of uh, atomic power. Uh, it became a, a a very dangerous situation. Now, there's another clinical, a world-renowned. Uh, clinical hypnotherapist, um, uh, I'm forgetting her name, starts with D, Dorothy maybe, um, I've forgotten her name. Anyway, she's written a, a book called Waves of Volunteers. Now, because the highly evolved beings could not interfere with our progression towards an atomic future where we could annihilate all life on the planet, they they took another alternative and that was to be born in, dro in droves on this planet. Now, when they are born on, in droves on this planet into physicality, 
they go through the same process that we go through. Uh, and that is amnesia. They forget their true nature and they forget where they come from. Uh, however, they're here with a higher consciousness and it helps to raise the overall consciousness of humanity. Uh, and perhaps those issues can be avoided. You know, those catastrophe issues can be avoided. Um, those, that sort of information has been verified um, over and over again using past life regression clinical hypnotherapy, uh, including the hypnotherapist that we had at Magpie House for many years. Um, and I, I'm going to try and get in touch with him again um, because I'm sure he has new information to share with us coming from the, the clients and their deep realms of information. Um, <clears throat> I might skip some of these ones. So this is about how highly evolved beings create children. Uh, it's not the way we do it in our society. And instead of raising the children by the mothers and fathers, the biological parents, they are actually raised by the entire village, you know, the entire community. And the strong element there is they are raised by the elders. And what do we do in our society? We put our elders in aged care homes. And then we, we're finding now we can't even visit them unless we get uh, jabbed. Uh, and you'll probably find that the aged care are getting jabbed without permission. Um, I've made a suggestion on, a, on another blog. The solution to this aged care lockdown is to take the aged care, the aged out of those institutions. That's, that is a very difficult issue though. Um, a lot of these people um, are probably too far gone <clears throat> to be in general society. Um, the point is in these rural cooperatives, these communities that are being proposed, in general, nobody gets sick, including the elders. Right? It's a healthy lifestyle where we're not indulging in all sorts of things. Uh, there's a lack of stress. Um, and we look after ourselves. You know, we, we do our daily uh, uh, affirmations, meditations, exercise. Exercise is the meditation of the body. It's the, it's the way to keep ourselves healthy. And, um, and so the elders don't need to be look after, looked after. They can look after themselves up until the day they, they drop. And that's the natural condition for humans. That's in total opposition to this um, pandemic uh, idea of vaccinations and artificially induced health. It doesn't work and in fact is killing people. Um, the natural condition for humans is perfect health. It's a perfect design. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we have a, a yoga school at our center. Um, George, can I comment there? 